Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Oh yeah. Welcome back to the gentlemen's then. Jeff and Sean here. Again. Just, you know, living the dream. We gotta just, you know, do what we gotta do. We're in the middle We're of a doing blizzard. It, bro. We're in the middle of a blizzard right now, so. Really wanted to do this together. Unsafe. It's not going to happen tonight. Unsafe road conditions are going to just there. like Milady. We're looking at six to nine inches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's if you split it in half and flip it out. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! So you want to hear a funny story? What I really wanted to do tonight. I thought we were going to do it together again. Yeah. Like we always do. I wanted to look you in the eyes as we did it. Yeah. <laughs> but, so I told my lady, she calls me the other day. She's like, I'm at Walmart. Do you need anything? I was like, can you please get me smelling salts? Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> She's like... What the fuck do you need smelling salts? I said, you know, we're going through a lot of shit on the podcast. T's and P's to Frankie. Like, we've been missing Frankie. Yeah. You know, and and there's a lot of shit going on. I love his father. I've actually known his father longer than he's known his father. His father was more of a father to you than your own. Right, and I legit, I've, I, knew, I knew his father before he knew his father. And, uh... You know, it's kind of weighing on us. And I was like, all right, we got to yeah. get back to to the dick and fart jokes. Yeah, so we we got to get back to the base of this yeah. podcast. We got to get back. I was back. like, babe, babe, I need some smelling salts. She's like, well, where the fuck are the smelling salts? And I was like, probably by the pharmacy. It's going to be your best bet. She's looking around. She's like, I don't see it. I was like, baby, by the sporting goods. I was like, just ask somebody. She's like, I am not asking for <laughs> smelling salts. Where are the smelling salts? She's like, how am I going to explain this? I was like, just tell them you're like a youth hockey coach and these kids get knocked out all the time and you need to get them back into the game. <laughs> <laughs> these kids get knocked. There's constant flow of concussions for these kids. <laughs> right. Here, man, here, Frankie's with us. She's like, I'm not saying shit. One more time. Want to touch it? Goddamn right I do. There it is. I want to... Two big hands around him. I want to touch him. Beat it on my forehead. Nice hug. But yeah, so bottom... uh, Moral of the story is I didn't get any small talks. Because she wouldn't ask. So maybe next time. Watching the NFC Championship game... Did you notice, like, when the guy for uh, Tampa Bay came on the field and he was fucking had the smelling salts in his hand as, as he's on the field, he's walking around? <laughs> well, that's what I thought it was maybe in the sporting goods section. Patrick Mahomes, like, breathing that shit in every time. Well, I used to have them in my garage yeah, in the old gentleman's den when we did the podcast together. Someone's like, why the fuck do you have smelling salts? And I was like, why would I not? I don't know. Someone's getting tired. We're partying. It's 3 a.m. I don't do coke. Good nope. old-fashioned smell. Smelling salt. salts. <laughs> Plus, it. apparently, the lady is coaching a youth hockey team. <laughs> uh, and no one plays hockey where we're at. So. What are you talking about? I saw kids playing hockey today. Out on uh, Powers Lake. Well, that's Powers Lake. We drove past, and my, my lady actually said, there's kids on that hockey field. <laughs> she said hockey field? <laughs> nice. And then she instantly said, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Look at those kids on that hockey field. <sighs> I love you, babe. Oh, man. The rink. The rink. Oh, and uh, 
We do have to throw a uh, rest in peace out to uh, Cloris Leachman, a.k.a. Gam Gam from, mm-hmm. from Beer Fest. No one warmed a sausage like you, Gam Gam. I used to be able to take nine inches of this. I mean, how do you explain that? I mean, that's your greatest role. I mean, she peaked at that movie, right? Beer Fest? Well, dude, she was... When Beer Fest came out, she had she died when she was like 94. So Beer Fest came out, she had to be like 80, at least 85. But that's your claim to fame. I'm the old... I, I'm the old Blow whore. Job. I'm the jerk off lady. <laughs> I'm the old whore. <laughs> yes, I'm the village whore from Beer Fest. Check out my IMDb. I, well, she, believe it or not, Cloris Leishman was a uh, Oscar and Emmy winner. Yeah, best hands in the business. <laughs> Just the best jerking skills there is. Forming those sausages. Eat that sausage like no other. <sighs> All right, so let's get into it. What do you mean? I thought we already got it. Let's get into the. Uh, let's just end this now. It's not going to get any better than yeah, what just happened. Yeah, we've we've we've, 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 we've peaked <laughs> six minutes in. No, uh, I think our average listening time is four minutes, so we're already surpassed that. If we shut this off now, if we just played nothing but smooth jazz <laughs> for the next <laughs> 53 minutes, <laughs> no one would even know. <laughs> no, uh, how about uh, GameStop stock being worth fucking $300 at one point? I'm all for it, man. My favorite part of this is the billionaires crying. You've been rigging this system forever. You've been sure. What li- once, once the little guy just gets a couple crumbs, you know, not a, just, a, just a little taste of the honey. Exactly. They're like, oh, fuck no. Shut this bitch down. That's what I don't like. That and, Do- and Dogecoin. Doge cat? Dogecoin making, making people money. In all honesty, I just saw something that we actually can go on. And it's uh, crazy. It's 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 too much for my small brain to comprehend. I know what the fucked up thing about it is. People are okay with someone betting on a company to fail and all those people to lose their jobs. Yeah, like that's cool. But when someone bets the other way for this company to do good, yeah, they're like, can't have this. Can't have it. Well, that's because they all are going to lose. So what they're what it does, the, like the short sell thing, is basically they borrow the stock, then give it back to the person, and collect the dividends. So they collect all the money that's made on the stock. So if the stock's at a dollar and it goes up to ten dollars, they're making nine dollars per share. Yeah. And they're not and they're not selling it. They're just giving. They're like borrowing the stock. But when you short a stock, you're betting on that stock to bomb, yeah. to fail, to go out of business. Well, that's the thing is that's when it's that's spikes. What had, that was the movie. The big short was about the guy who shorted the housing market. He bet on the housing market to fail, and it did. And everyone's like, you're fucking nuts. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I I think that's fucked up in, in I don't know. Call me old fashioned, but I don't want to bet on something to fail. I would rather look through and find something positive. What do I think is going to make money in the future? Exactly. You know, Bitcoin, Tesla, whatever you want to do. Well, you invest in something that I can be like, like proud of. Well, that's the thing is, you know, I'm not going to. Not like, fuck this company. Sorry, Sean. I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, go ahead. But you know what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. For sure. This company is going to fail. I'm betting on it to fail. I would never. That's just me, though. I'm a kind person. I think positively. I would never want to bet on something to fail. Fuck those guys. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not. Got what they deserved. I'm not. I'm not shedding a tear for these assholes at all. 
the dude's sitting on a gold, gold fucking toilet with his laptop on his naked knees. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping a diamond dookie shit. Sell. Sell. And the best so part about get, it uh, is everybody's holding. So what that's doing is really fucking the hedge funds, and it's hilarious to me. I'm just any way I can see the little uh, the big guy fucking fail is fucking great. Yeah, and, well, especially because they're in your middle class, and you've been kicked the fucking around. Don't get me wrong, my life it's not that bad. Well, that's mine isn't either. It's like I'm not. I mean, the only thing that sucks is you know going to work forty hours a week. I just can't everywhere. stand all these like politicians. Every time they're they 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 bring a new politician out, the middle class, the middle class, the middle class. That's where you're they making. That's where Fuck. That's where they're making all their money is the middle class. Well, the middle class is the one who votes, right? Mm-hmm. Because everybody wants to, you know, we all think it's going to be better. We're hoping it's better. Yeah. Nah. Nah. It's because, like I said, like the I, same shit sandwich. I said it. Yeah, I See, said we're it, getting serious again. Jesus Christ! No, I said it this week though. I go, everybody, you know, <laughs> we got all these idiots storming the Capitol. They want a revolution. You know what? You know what the revolution is? What's happening right now in the stock market? Because any way you can—that's a real revolution. Any I mean, way you real. can hurt their fucking wallet is what's going to fucking make the difference. Storming the Capitol ain't gonna do shit. Sorry. You're all just going to go to it's jail. Like, everybody off. Yeah. You're just going to go to jail. This fucking hurting their the bottom line for them. Right. You need white collar crimes. Yeah. <laughs> no fucking blood. Don't need blood. Right. Just need to white take. White collar crimes. Come on now. Just need to take the fucking money out of their pockets. <sighs> which is hilarious. Makes so me, sad. Makes me, you know, it's heartbreaking. Fuck them. Tom Brady's in the Super Bowl again. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Let me let me just let me just break this down before you break it down. Tom Brady's been in the NFC for one fucking year. <laughs> yep. Tom Brady has as many NFC championships as Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers, which is one. Yep. But by that account, too, is they also have just as many AFC championships as Rex Grossman. NFC. NFC. Well, that's what I'm saying. NFC championships is Rex Grossman. Right. I mean, Rodgers did win. Yeah. Grossman is fucking shouldn't have that popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> So, fumbling them all over the goddamn place. So I shared a stat with Jeff offline, and now I'm going to put it on the podcast because I saw it, and I think it's fucking hilarious. It is amazing. So Tom Brady's been in the league 21 years, and he's been to 10 Super Bowls. That's a 47% success rate. Steph Curry's career three-point percentage is 43%. You got a better shot at Tom Brady making the Super Bowl than <laughs> Steph Curry making a three point basket. <laughs> and Steph the Curry shooter of all time. Steph Curry holds the fucking record for most three pointers in a fucking season. That is fucking nuts. Steph and Curry. Then I brought up Tom Brady for one of those seasons. Didn't even play. Yeah. He got hurt the first game Blue is of the one first of those game. seasons. So technically, it's. Fifty percent, yeah, of completed seasons. Yeah, that is unbelievable. You, there's no argument. There is the LeBron, Jordan. I mean, they played in two different eras. I'm always going to be a Jordan guy. I grew up watching Jordan. It's different, though. I understand. Like, I grew up watching. We saw a guy change the league. Period. When you watch something, you understand it better. Like mm-hmm. Jordan's style, I understand it. I watched it. I lived it. His killer instinct, it was amazing. But there's kids who've never seen Jordan play and have just seen LeBron. And then you'll see like a clip or 
you know, something that they play on NBA Network or whatever, and you're yeah. like, yeah, that's cool. But they don't really understand the way that he played like we do, and I get that. Yeah. So if you want to say, that's why I don't really argue. If you want to say LeBron's the greatest ever, he's the greatest you've ever seen. Yeah. With Brady, there's probably some people who are like, oh, Montana, and I never watch Man- Montana play. So that's the and I've thing. only seen Brady, but now it's to the point where there is, there's no denying it. You can't deny it. No. It doesn't matter what era. It doesn't matter anything. Football is the heart. Dan Marino, arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, went to the Super Bowl. What his second year? Yeah. And they're like he he'll be back. Never no. went back. Never sniffed his it. entire career, and he. Changed the game, literally changed rules Never because of the way he it. played quarterback. And Tom Brady has been to the Super Bowl ten fucking times. Six wins. It doesn't matter. He's not a hundred percent. You know no, that's no, no, a big no. argument with Jordan. He's, he's six for six, and LeBron's, you know, four for ten. It's still, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's still fucking all that. All that time. Just the, just the other stat that I gave you about how awesome Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers are. Yeah. I'm a Bears fan. Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen. I can't stand him, but I respect him. He's only been to the Super Bowl once. Yeah. As awesome as he is, Tom Brady's been to the Super Bowl ten fucking times. Let that sink into your fucking brains. Ten times. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's insanity. It's, it's in, you know, don't get me wrong. Do I think Brady's going to win this Super Bowl? Fuck. Going up against a fucking steamroller of a fucking team. Let's be honest. I'm excited to see this, though. Let's be honest, though. The Chiefs are fucking, if they want to score 100 points, they're going to score 100 fucking points. I can't think of a Super Bowl. I mean, maybe I'm kind of just lost in the moment. Yeah. I can't think of a Super Bowl I've been more excited for in recent memory. Because you got the new come up. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is doing shit. It could it could be the it could be the passing of the torch. I'm so excited to see this because you got Tom Brady. I mean, his team's great. Their wide receivers are stacked, their defense is good. And then you look at the Chiefs, unlimited fucking weapons. Their defense ain't nothing to slouch at. The I'm pumped, bro. Travis fucking Kelsey. I'm fucking juice. Travis Kelsey makes that fucking team go. I might buy a bag of fucking Coke for the game. That's how excited I am. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Kelsey. Place of bets. Travis Kelsey makes that offense go. He is He is a. What do you have last game? 15 fucking catches or something? That's a tight end. It's a fucking tight end. Dude, he's a tank, bro. It's amazing. And then you what got does. Gronk, who doesn't even really get used anymore, but he's a phenomenal blocker. And it's like, eh, case of emergency, break glass. That's the type of dude Gronk is now. You, you know, you look at their, you look at their lineup. You look at Tampa Bay's lineup. You got Gronk, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Scotty Miller, Cameron Brate. Leonard Fournette, Ronald, Antonio Brown, Antonio He's Brown, on the bench. Antonio Brown. Their team's so stacked. Antonio Brown can't even see the field. Well, Antonio <laughs> Brown was hurt. He's he's nursing a knee injury. And you got Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette in the back of field. That's a fucking stacked team, st- dude. And but, their defense is not in a slouch at. Yeah, no. But then you go to the I'm Chiefs, punk, bro. Then you Who go to the. Got? Then you Roman go to the best right now. Who you got. <sighs> As much as I want to see the Bucks win, they got to go point for point with fucking Mahomes. I'm there with you, bro. Is it, it's my heart? My heart wants Brady. On my head, saying the Chiefs. Well, and Mahomes. Think about it. the Chiefs last year in the playoffs were down 24 points at the half, and they won the game 42 to 24. <laughs> I know. 
but it's Tom Brady. I can't do it. I can't bet against him. I, Tom I, Brady I did cannot. everything he could to give that game to the Packers. If I was a betting man, I'm out. I'm not betting on this game. No. Could you? There's no way. I could bet the over that they're going to score over. Yeah. But that's the thing. I've been surprised before. Like a lot of the, remember when the Patriots were undefeated that year? Highest scoring team in the league. I mean, what was that Super Bowl? 17 14? It's underwhelming. <laughs> no one scored any fucking points in that Got game. Got beat by Eli Manning twice. Oh. That's got a fucking burn in his craw. Beat by Eli Manning twice. Beat the shit out of Peyton. I think Peyton only got one, one, only one, one uh, AFC championship from him. One or two. Well, he got two Super Bowls. Peyton. Well, yeah, but he got one with Denver. The Broncos. Yeah. But when it was the Colts. And you lost no, one, though. He got his ass kicked. <laughs> Let's not forget the Broncos when they got rolled over by the Seahawks. He lost two Super Bowls. Lost to the Saints, too, when he was with the Colts. He's 2-2. Two yeah. two. He's 500. Mm. So, I He's mean. Got Brady's. But, you know, yes, Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Quarterback, yeah. Quarterback. Greatest. Hands down. There's no argument. If someone comes up with an argument, I mean, what argument would you have? There's none. Oh, it's Belichick. Yeah, well, Belichick. Well, and Jordan, at least there could be an argument. Like, oh, LeBron did. LeBron's a better passer. LeBron's better this. Jordan's a better that. Jordan. Like, with with Tom Brady, there there's nothing. Just shut the fuck up and go to sleep. <laughs> If you're, yeah, there's no argument. No, and then you know, us being Chicago fans, the greatest football player. Period. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Is Walter Payton? Football. Football player. He can football block. Player. He can. Ca- he ran. Not greatest running back. Greatest football player. Football player. He could catch. He ran fucking great routes. He fucking I think can, in one season he threw like half the touchdown pass. <laughs> he, I think he scored or threw on half the team's he, points. Fifty percent team's points. Yeah, it's just hey, we're biased, but you know what? Change my mind. Yeah, and and I and to the you know, day we bitch we bitch because it's. It's been so long, you know, because of championships and whatever and 85 Bears. But would you, like, sacrifice? I mean, think about we've been blessed with a lot of shit. Yeah. As far as Chicago fans. I mean, and people who listen are like, oh, fuck these fucking homers. But, I mean, we had Walter Payton and the 85 Bears. Then we had the Jordan fucking dynasty All of our Bulls. sports teams have won championships. Every one of them has won a championship. People are bitching and complaining. We need to win more. This and that. It's like, just enjoy what we have, man. Everyone has won a championship in Chicago. Be happy with what you got. Within the last 30 years. Cubs broke a fucking 300-year-old curse. Cubs Cubs in 16, White Sox in 05. The fucking Blackhawks won three, Bulls won six, Bears won a fucking Super Bowl in eighty five. Oh, yeah. And I've no seen one's them happy all. in Chicago because no one won this year. The the problem is is we're not happy oh. because the Bears roster has a fucking team that can win. Yeah. They well, have a team that can fucking win. If you don't have a quarterback, you don't have shit. No. Bottom line. For sure. Even if you have a quarterback, it doesn't mean you're winning shit. Like we just talked about. Damn Bruce Marino. and Rodgers. Or Bruce. Fucking <laughs> Breeze. Breeze and Rodgers. Just because you have a quarterback doesn't mean you're winning either. Exactly. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, there's our there's sports talk for you. That's our sports talk. Oh, fuck. We got one more thing. 
Jared Goff is now a fucking Detroit Lion as Matthew Stafford's on his way to the Rams. Whew. And the Lions got... Good for Stafford, though. And the Lions got broke off. They got... so. The, yeah, explain what they got. So, for Jared... It, Lions sending Stafford to the Rams for Jared Goff and two first-round picks, one this year, one next year. I think that's what it is. It's either this year or it's 2022 and 2023. I think that's what you it is. You know what? I, when you told me this earlier. <sighs> Here, I'll let me bring it up real quick. When you told me this earlier, I was kind of like, wow, that's, that's pretty good. But then I'm like thinking like. Stafford's old, man. Two first round picks for a Stafford's thirty two. I know, but he's hurt every year. Well, let's be honest, man. I mean he's two sh- first round picks for Stafford. Like before I was like, Yeah. But they gave up golf. God damn it, where is it at? I'm just thinking of the Bears when they gave up Kyle Orton for Jay Color. <laughs> Trying to justify this. Because we gave up two first round picks. Is Goff better than Orton? No, they're the same person. <laughs> hey, uh, same dude. Start your Foot Clan movie story because I got to take a leak. Foot Clan? Yeah, the Foot Clan movie. Oh my God. Um, I don't even know how this started, but I was just spitballing the other day. First of all, my daughter, God bless her soul. I know she's mine because we're on HBO. We're scrolling through, and she's like, I want to watch that Turtles movie. I was like, what Turtles movie? We start scrolling through. She's like, this one. It's the original. 1990, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Out of all the movies, out of all the cartoons, out of all the bullshit, my daughter wants to watch the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I got to admit, I cried a little bit in that moment. This is my daughter. This is the exact moment I'm supposed to be right now. (sighs) And we watched that movie and we enjoyed it. But then... Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze came on. And we watched that as well. Don't get me wrong. She loves it. My daughter loves that movie just as much as the first one. But I had an epiphany. Okay. What's that? The epiphany happened in the beginning of that movie when all the Foot Clan knew that the junkyard was their fall point. And Shredder ended up showing up. Mm -hmm. And I just had a thought in my head. What if Shredder Shredder never showed up? (laughs) So I want to make a Foot Clan movie about these guys that have been training for battle (laughs) their entire lives. About Shredder. And all of a sudden, they meet at the junkyard and Shredder never shows up. So if Shredder Shredder died. If Shredder died and the Foot Clan soldiers had to get regular ass jobs. It's, I think it'd be great. I, like, I what mean, do I do? I don't know. I'm pretty good with a nightstick. It's about it. <laughs> I think, in all honesty, I think that's a a short that we work on for the for YouTube. It's got to be because you know why, Sean? Because I'm pretty good with a nightstick. It's it's just <clears throat> think about it. It's just one of those ones where it's like filling out a job application. Your foot sl- <laughs> for the Foot Clan. What, been, what was your f- previous job? Right, that was one of the s- <laughs> Foot Clan member. Yeah. Sex never. <laughs> <laughs> Menthol or regular? Karate all the time. P- karate PJs all the time. <laughs> I mean, karate yeah. PJs. I mean, they fought in their. Pajamas. Are you in on this movie or what, dude? Do I'm, you feel me on this? I'm a hundred percent in. Just like I said, uh, since oh, my back, back since the regular my, since the vertebrae. since the regular news can say whatever the fuck they want, I think we start our own news channel 
it, but it's going to be all satire for us. What would you do? Both of us throw a, a button-down shirt on, tie, and a suit jacket, sit behind a desk, and just make up news. Like, did you... I Listen, I can't make up jokes like this. This isn't. This is actually what a elected official said. This is an elected official. I, her last name is Kelly. I don't remember what her first name is. She's a Republican. The wildfires, not Kelly. The wildfires were started by Jewish space lasers, <laughs> and that's why we need space force. You goddamn right they were. <laughs> what? The actual Did fuck. Did you read? Did you read CNN? <laughs> we talked earlier about all that shit going on with fucking GameStop. Yeah. So CNN reported that it was white supremacists that were teaming up going after Jewish hedge funds. <laughs> this is CNN. So, okay, so then reporting. Fox White News supremacy. Fox News had to be the fucking the the space lasers and fucking <laughs> CNN That's the name of this podcast is Space Lasers Space Lasers So <laughs> Jewish space lasers started the fucking the, I So I my and com- why wouldn't they? my my comment who um, else has been to space besides the Jews? I do. I don't know. <laughs> so my comment on this was: everybody knows about the Jewish space lasers. It, it they're stored right next to, uh, on Monkey Knife Fight Island. That sounds like <laughs> fake news, John. It's this is an elected official that said this. This is what's crazy about this. It's the funniest fucking shit to me. Dude, you don't think they're fucking at home doing edibles too? Like, what are you talking about? We I, should have that person on. I want to know about these lasers. Should we be concerned? Is that what's causing the polar the, ice caps to melt? It's the, Is it these lasers? It's the space laser. And, and like I said, that... What kind of lasers? It's what if there's sharks out there with, with laser, laser beams, beams on their freaking foreheads? Like, I, I wish I could make these stories up, but this is the shit people believe now. It's yeah. unfucking believable. This is this is a common sense thing, folks. There's no such thing as space lasers. I don't know. Hey, Sean, have you ever seen one? Dude. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen a space lizard? You son of a bitch. There's no <laughs> fucking way. I, I wish that was like an onion post, but it was like New York Times posted this. Sure it wasn't? No, it was the, like the New York Times that posted it. Uh, it was like what it was. You gotta be specific now. Yeah, I know. Our Dude, listeners I, deserve the truth, Sean. We're here to bring it. The truth is, people Just are like Chris fucking best. We're gonna fucking bring it on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Gabrielle Union. It's already been brought. I don't even know what we're talking about. It's, I lost you somewhere between space lasers and it's, Putin. It's, did you mention Putin? No, did not mention Putin. He's in there somewhere. No. He's got to have something to do with the no. space lasers. Putin's sitting back going, what the fuck are these idiots talking about? You think Putin's horse has lasers on it when he's riding a shirtless through the... I think Putin's horse just has a fucking... Two shotguns on its sides, or two mini think, guns. What do you think Putin's horse's name is? It's probably it's probably something some Russian crazy Russian name, Vladimir. Vladimir. Vlad, Vlad, Vlad and his, Vlad and his Vlad horse Vlad. 
It's got to be like, it can't be just Vlad. It's probably like Vlad the Lad. <laughs> Vlad, the, <laughs> Vlad the Impaler, who was actually a person. Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a person. Sexy <sighs> Vlad. You can't just be Vlad. That's too boring. You don't name a horse Vlad. Now, have you ever been to? Have you ever been to a horse race and bet on horses? Because I have. Yeah. No one. None of the horses are just. They're not. They're not named like Madonna. They don't just have one name. It's got to have at least. No, they're named. Three they're names named like to be a competitive they're horse. Named, they're named like, Biscuit. Those days are done, bro. They're named like Cinnamon Toast Crunch and fucking. It's like Sea Biscuits Jizzrag. That's yeah. the name of these horses. <laughs> For sure. For sure. It's... And I would bet on Seabiscuit's Jizzerack. Number one. Numero uno. <laughs> we was talking to somebody today and I did. About Seabiscuit's the... no. <laughs> no, I did the old. Does this rag smell like chloroform? Mm. No? Oh, sorry. Wrong rag. What was her name? <sighs> Is she still in your house? No. No. Pass it on the floor. <laughs> no. No, we, we, these we, is jokes, people. Yes. Does this rag smell like chloroform? No, it smells like jizz. Oops, sorry, wrong rag. Wrong rag. <laughs> you know, this is this is the things we think about when we've had a do. few a few daddy sodas. Oh uh, yeah, my Foot Clan movie. <laughs> I think it's gonna be good. The foot Do you clan? think it's going to be good as uh, the new Nicolas Cage movie? Holy fucking shit. He didn't say one word in the movie. He doesn't have to. The only thing he it's said amazing. was... Not a giggy. No. That's Arnold. But I mean, he was... Nicolas Cage just does eyes and hands. Yeah, but he was exerting, so he was making... The sound. Put the bun. What's the worst accent? Nicholas Cage and Con Air? Ooh. Or Keanu Reeves in Dracula? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's the worst accent? Um anytime Liam bunny. Neeson anytime Back Liam Neeson in the box. Anytime Liam Neeson does English. Like when, he was no. in, like when he was in those westerns? How dare you? When he was in those westerns, you could still hear his fucking accent just eating through the English oh, or Liam the American Neeson. accent. What are talking about? <sighs> Liam Neeson had some westerns he did. I'm not he, talking about Liam Neeson. I'm just saying his, 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 his American accent was horrible. Trying to think who the fuck Liam Neeson is right now. Taken. English, like English, English. Yeah, I kind of. I don't know what. Or I actually, American. I I don't know. No American accent. He's. <laughs> why do we? Why do Americans say they have an English accent? Because we don't. No. English people speak English, but when you write down, like, what do you speak? I write down English, but I don't. I speak American. <laughs> hey, it's it's almost getting to the point where we're speaking like uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, Sean, take a break. All right, take a breather. Well, we're we're it's <laughs> almost Christ, getting to the okay. point where it's what was it? Uh, an idiocracy, where he's like it's mostly <laughs> gibberish <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> with grunts. But we don't speak English. Like, if you go to England, hello, you you lot some crumpets and tea? That's English. That's just the accent. Oh, okay. So I have an, so it's all English, but someone has an English accent. Well, you go to the South, it's a different and accent. I have an American accent. Right, but it's all American. Doesn't matter if you're from the Uper. It or now, yotter. Yeah. Or if you go down, you know, south, the fucking Georgia Florida line, where they're all skeeting in rags and rubbing it in their sisters' noses. (laughs) 
what the fuck have you been watching? I'm just saying that's what I heard happens on there. I mean, I've never been there or anything, but I mean, you yeah. you did go to Texas. I have. I'm yeah. talking about the Georgia Florida line. Fuck Florida Georgia line isn't Fuck that a band? That, that you, band sucks, and that's where they're at. That band's fucking dog shit. Sorry. The lady loves country, and she had the country station on the other day, and I was like, the fuck am I listening to? It's not fucking country anymore. We can come back around to a Nicolas Cage movie, but I just want to bring this up real quick, because I was thinking about this the other day, and talking about country music and all this bullshit, and I grew up in the golden age of hip-hop, Wu-Tang Clan, Biggie, Tupac. I love it. And now I'm just like, what happened to rap? Right? It's no longer a story. And, but I was listening the other day to a uh, local station, 95 Will Rock. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we all wonder what happened to rap. But then I was listening to that station and I was questioning myself like, what happened to music? What happened period? to rock? What, what happened? happened to rock music? Five figure death punch? Ugh. This can't be it, right? Ugh. What yeah. happened to like guitar solos and like songs with meaning? I'm just like, what? This is rock? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's we we like sound not like just rap. We sound like we, we sound old as fuck. We sound this like is horrible. Yeah, we sound so goddamn old. But it's everyone shit. who's fucking twenty five and under just turn this shit off. No, it's Flick. how dare they? I love Five Finger Death Punch. Shut the fuck up. It's everything is like overproduced. Well, it's funny how, yeah, and then it has to be, like, radio appropriate. Like, we need to get you on the radio. So no, if they don't. can't play it on the radio, you have no fucking hits. That's the thing now. So I don't even fucking know. That's like, the- so I listen to a song on the radio, and it's like, this sounds like fucking shit. I would never buy this album. That's the thing now is you don't have to use the radio because of the Internet. Streaming. If you want to get to a broader audience, you just got to make sure you get on fucking Spotify and Pandora. And But like you said, though, didn't you, weren't you saying like one of the previous podcasts, like iHeartRadio kind of bought all this yeah. bullshit up? iHeartRadio so like- is basically the monopoly of radio now. So their bands that they know, the bands that get played are the ones that they're They've signed their basically signed their deal with the devil, and that's right. and that's what you got is you get this fucking shit storm of fucking music now. That there's no feeling in it anymore. Oh, Five Finger Death Punch writes really good songs. No, they don't. Read the fucking okay. lyrics. They're not good fucking songs. Sean, when he said that we were all, we've we've talked about this chalk so on many this. Times. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it again because this is how I live my life every day. We're all just <laughs> sidewalk chalk. Jesus Christ! The sidewalk chalk. But how much caught chalk could a sidewalk chalk? If a sidewalk <laughs> could chalk, so- <laughs> side- right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's how the lyric went, right? I mean, why don't you tell us what what's your favorite Five Finger Death Punch song or lyric? I Is don't. It company? I because no, that's not a Five Finger Death Punch lyric. <laughs> that is a Bad Company lyric that they fucking stole. Just like well, they fucking, probably paid the rights. Just like, oh my god, the disturbed version of sound of si- the Sound of Silence. Fuck you. Oh That's my god. Sound. The Bad Wolves version Duh. of Zombie. Yeah. Fuck you. You guys are making money on fucking songs that shouldn't be touched. I, the Bad Wolf wasn't that bad, though. I'm not going to lie. 
Not that bad. Dolores is spinning in her grave. Yeah. You know who did an awesome zombie fucking uh, cover? Miley Cyrus. I respect you Miley seen Cyrus it, go check it out. more than Miley I... Cyrus recently did a concert. Quarantine's going on. You can't have live shows. She did a concert recently. Live streamed it. She did a cover of Zombie by the Cranberries. Honestly, probably the best cover I've ever heard. Phenomenal. Yeah, I respect Miley Cyrus more than I respect fucking anybody in Five Finger Death Punch or any pretty much uh, pretty much any of the new rock bands. I went back this week and listened to Limp Biscuit. You have to. I went back and listened and Limp Biscuit put out better music. Was it than, Roland? <laughs> if you go and listen to three dollar bills, y'all, the first album. Yeah. That is better than any five finger death punch album. <laughs> I love hip hop down to my soul, down to my bones. That's what I grew up on is nineties hip hop music. So I'm just like waiting, you know, for someone to, but I also love rock music. I grew up with Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, and I'm just like waiting and like nothing. I, I, when's the last time you got excited about like a new rock band? I mean, like maybe, for me, maybe Chevelle. Like Chevelle came out, I was like, "Wow, this is great!" I lied. Huge fan of Incubus, and then maybe Chevelle. But I can't remember. But, but, I'm trying to be serious right now. And, and, I, I and, can't remember the last time I got like excited about a rock and a new rock group. Maybe. God, I guess I can't be too excited because I forgot the name of the band already. No. But that band that sounds like Led Zeppelin. Greta Van Fleet. Fuck is their name? Yes. That band. Maybe them. But they technically stole everything, so can I really get that excited? It's what it is. Greta Van Fleet is very good. What it is. Salute. It's everything's been done. You know what I'm saying? So we should just stop? No. But if you're going to redo something and put your own twist on it, you can't bastardize the original fucking version. That's why when I was on my edible trip the other day and you were giving me shit because I was listening to covers, the covers... No, you if were the covers the were covers bad. You, I would have turned it off. But the covers you were listening to, they weren't that bad though. Was like karaoke. I didn't. It was versions. It was like hearing the song for the first time again. When you listen to fucking smells like Teen Spirit and it's a strong female vocalist, I was like, oh, I was fucking intrigued, and she was actually good. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna listen to it, and it was like, fuck, like the first time I heard it. I, I, I respect, about. I respect it, but like I said, I was super high, so don't listen to anything I'm fucking saying right now. So, like, when I hear Chris Cornell's version of "Nothing Compares to You," it's amazing because he's not bastardizing the fucking song. Yeah, it was a different. I I didn't like his Billy Jean. I'll be honest. No, I love Michael Jackson. That's that's some another, people have done it, but that's one of those songs that you don't touch. Some of those make a band though. Like if someone Alien Ad Farm did Smooth Criminal, awesome though, phenomenal. But let's be honest, Fall Out Boy did Beat It, not bad. Smooth Criminal by Alien Ant Farm was the same tempo as the actual version of, of Smooth Criminal. They just they just added more fucking nuts to it, basically. But it yeah. was it was the same tempo. They didn't slow it down. They didn't speed it up. 
it was still dun, 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 dun. you know what I mean? It yeah. was it wasn't changed that much. Well, the thing about that, nothing compares to you, was a very slow, it, sad song. Yeah, and Chris Cornell's voice, he just captured it. It was. Yeah. Arguably one of the best. I still to this day love listening to Chris Cornell's version of "Nothing Compares to You." Listening to- and a lot of people, I love when when people like shit on Prince. I don't yeah. like Prince at all. Some of the greatest songs you've ever heard were written by Prince. Were written by Prince. I don't shit Nothing on Prince. Nothing compares to you. Prince is Prince, a genius. Even girls are like, I don't like Prince. Oh, yeah? You like the song by Cindy Lauper, Girls Just Want to Have Fun? Guess who wrote that shit? Prince. Look it up. Google it. Prince wrote, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Prince? I just watched... Uh, Don't oh, love Prince. You secretly love Prince. I watched a reaction video to uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when they did My Guitar Gently Weeps. And... People, it's, a lot of people don't know that's a cover. And they think it's an Eric Clapton original. It's not. No, it's a Beatles song. Right. But a lot of people don't know that. But it's Tom Petty, Jeff Lynne, Steve Winwood playing "While My Guitar Gently Weeps," and Prince comes on and starts playing a solo. And it is one of the most amazing fucking things you'll ever see. It's. Incredible. I don't know, Sean. I've seen Pussy. Guitar it's solo it's pretty wise. pretty amazing. Guitar solo wise. I've seen it up close, too. And a couple times. <laughs> maybe twice in my life. I'm talking about guitar solos, Jeff. You ever seen Pussy up close? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> and if you, don't, stop. if you don't know, Pussy rules the world. I what? Don't, I don't I don't give a shit when anybody says Yeah, but wait a minute, hold on now. We we're just talking about hip hop. I mean, according to Wu Tang, Cash rules everything around me. Yeah, Cash rules Cream. everything around you. But pussy rules Gets the world. Funny. Does it? I thought girls. <sighs> it's attached to girls, so yeah. Well, I don't know nowadays. Oh, shut up. There's women out there getting testicular cancer, and it's a horrible thing. <laughs> uh, we can't deny that. We can't just overlook the fact that there are mams out there getting testicular cancer, and something has to be done about it. Dude, it's... What do you think should be done, Sean? Give me your plan. If you were to have a magic wand... And you were to have complete power, what would you do? About what? About all of it. Will you just build an aquarium and be a merman? <laughs> I identify <laughs> as an Apache helicopter. You would what? I identify as an Apache helicopter. Damn, bro. That's a good helicopter, though. If you're going to pick one, at least pick the best. That's solid. You know what I mean? It's I don't even know how we fucking we, we this one is a roller coaster, but <laughs> we are fucking everywhere. Dude, you know who is in Apache helicopter movie? Nicholas Cage. It's come full circle back to fucking Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> this movie comes out the day before my birthday. Thank you sweet baby Jesus. Little six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. Willie's Wonderland with Nicolas Cage. We will put a link in the description. And Sean's dog is about to lick his ear hole. He's so pumped. He's like, Dad, 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 I want to go see Willie's Wonderland. Can you take me, Dad? And you're like, Hold on, son. <laughs> Just hold on. He I don't is... think you can handle it. Let me go watch it first. And then. And then I'll take it. What's the premise of this movie, Sean? Dude, I don't even fucking know. 
<laughs> he gets. I'll tell you the premise he, of this fucking movie. He's working it's as five the, nights of Freddy's. Five nights of Freddy's. He's working as a janitor in fucking Chuck E. Cheese, and the things are trying to kill him. I don't get it. You guys need to watch this. So it starts out. He has a flat tire, right? Not that hard to change. This dude shows up and says, "Well, if you clean my shithole with the Chuck E. Cheese animatronics for one night, I will fix your flat flat tire." And he's like, "I will fix your vehicle." Ugh. It, yeah, it, he had a flat tire. No, it wasn't a flat. Preview, he has one flat tire. How hard is that to change? And this guy's basically clean my shithole shop and I'll fix this one tire. Clean, and he's like, clean, like you said, he doesn't even talk. Clean In my, the, clean my weird fucking knockoff Chuck E. Cheese showbiz pizza fucking it is establishment. every 90s kid's nightmare to be locked inside Chuck E. Cheese and that rat comes to life it is that what is it Five Nights at Freddy's right yeah which I've so never seen I haven't seen it either but apparently that movie is in the works and it isn't stuck in limbo because they keep fighting over this or this or this or this so it's not getting made. Yeah. So then some other company is like, light bulb. Let's hire Nicolas Cage, the craziest bastard who's ever lived, and just put him in there so that these creatures, he's not stuck in there with them. They're stuck in there with him. It's, It's... It's almost as bad as Nicolas Cage's movie Jiu Jitsu. Where there's no Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> at all. Why would you name a movie Jiu Jitsu and there's that zero piece of Jiu Jitsu? Absolute zero. Zero Jiu Jitsu in that movie. Can't wait to see that either. It's Is Nicolas Cage like the new. Nicolas Cage is like, fuck it, I need 30. Action comedy. I need 38 bucks. I'll make this movie. But why? What did he spend it on? He had a good run. <sighs> National Treasures? I mean, they made like 10 of those. Dude, I, I don't know, man. Gone 60 Seconds? He's had some bangers. I just, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand. I don't. I'm not in Hollywood, and I don't understand it. I'll probably never understand it. Like we always, you know, you joke about Samuel L. Jackson. He's in every damn movie. He's put the script in front of him, and he's gonna make the movie. Yeah. Nicholas Cage has gotten <laughs> to that now. Nicholas Cage is at that okay. point now. You hate to see that to your heroes. They had it right in. The Batman movie, right? I mean, you either die a hero, yeah. or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. We talked earlier about like rap music and shit. <sighs> I hate to say this, Biggie and Pac. Let's say they were still alive, they'd be doing cameos and like Katy Perry fucking videos and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know what, though? A collaboration like, like that is different than... But they are considered two of the best rappers of all time. You know what, though? There's but, no argument about it. Yeah, it's but, like Tom. It's like the Tom Brady argument. Biggie and Pac, there's no argument. They're but, two of the best. But look at what, but if they were alive today, we might look at them differently. Maybe. But look at, like, Jay-Z. I think 100% we would. Here's a here's a here's a not popular opinion at all. I don't like Jay Z. One bit. I'm sorry, guys. Hey. God, I probably just committed one of the greatest fouls in the history of mankind. And I, some other people do this segment about not unpopular opinions. Yeah. I'm, I don't like Jay Z. One bit. I'm big pimping, sure. I got down to it in high school. 
Jay Z as a rapper? Not feeling it at all. Now, who'd you listen to more of, Pac or Biggie? I was a Pac guy. Yeah, you're a West Coast rap fan. Dre, no, I just, I, Snoop. I liked. Let me try to explain this right now. It's going to be a little difficult. I'm a little fucked up. I'm trying to get serious. I loved Biggie. But Pac for me. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I'm trying to think of the words right now. And I'm trying to keep the conversation going. Yeah. If this wasn't like a podcast, I can kind of like step back, take a second, like think about my thoughts and come back later. But we got to like keep the conversation going. And I don't want dead air. So, but Pac to me was lyrically, Biggie was phenomenal. Loved him. Mm hmm. But as he got like his first album was great. Second album, obviously, it's kind of like the rappers now. You change. You don't live in the fucking hood anymore. You're not scrapping for fucking yeah. And you're and, and, and what you're you saying is, is Pac Pac kind of stayed to the fucking hood side. Pac was more for me more poetry. Yeah, well, he because he was a poet, right? So I gravitated more towards Pac. Me growing up, I guess without I don't know why. It's weird. Maybe because I didn't have a father growing up. I'm trying to keep this conversation going. I. Possibly. I just maybe gravitated more towards his lyrics and his poetry about like real shit. It sucks that nowadays, I mean, obviously, after his death, there was a bunch of albums that came out. And uh, let's be honest, none of those albums were all that fucking great. But the thing that sucks about Pac is like, the one song that just constantly gets fucking played is uh, Changes. Yeah. And that's like one of my least favorite songs of all time. It's like, God, you just, they're just constantly playing this fucking song. So it's so played out. It's a lyrically, it's great. <sighs> I'm going to tell you right now. This I need to, I need, uh, this is for another time because I really want, I honestly, I really want to dive into. I I don't but like I don't changes think right now. I want to think about it. Yeah, and I want to I want to do this right. I'll tell you why I don't like changes, because the beat they use is a song by Bruce Hornsby in the range, and I like that song better than I like what Pac put out on on changes. And I'm being dead honest with you. I I like the story better in the Bruce Hornsby in the range song. Than the story that Pac told. Yeah, and the message was great. I loved it. I love no, the lyrics. Great, it's I a great song, message, but it's just. But it's like, well, anytime you hear a Pac song on the radio, what is it? It changes, which is stupid because you could play so many <laughs> he has others. So many great. There's, dude, he, there's so many other songs. How do you want Lyrically, it? Lyrically, the way How, you know. Why aren't you playing? How do you want it on the radio all the time? How do you feel? <laughs> I, I can't say the rest of the lyrics. I would play Dear yeah. Mama. I would play Dear Mama over Changes. Dear Mama. That's what I'm saying. Like those songs. I love Biggie, and I love his albums. But Tupac's albums, even like the shit that didn't get played on the radio, you could listen to a whole Pac album. And I'm like, I felt everything. It was just like poetry to me. I, I was like. Maybe it was the way I was raised, without a father, this and that. He had a strong relationship, obviously, with his mom. He wrote a lot about that. Mm -hmm. I just connected with that a lot more. And I wish I wasn't as fucked up as I am so I could dive 
deep into this because I've been like honestly waiting for this conversation. And now that it's here, I don't know how to respond. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this conversation, but I'm I'm a pot. Bottom of the line, Tupac for me, bro. And all day, all day, and twice on Sundays. See, you and I can have this conversation because we grew up with it. Frank Frankie jumps in, and it's Frankie's a little Wayne guy. Yeah, right to little Wayne. Yeah, and he missed the boat. He just missed it. And to be honest. He grew up, his first introduction to Snoop Dogg was when Snoop Dogg signed with... <laughs> Death Row. Fucking, no. Or no, uh, no. No Limit. Master P. Yeah, No yes. Limit. So he missed Death Row. Yeah. Frankie, listen. Like... I mean, he say, uh, na 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 na. And then he's like, woof, motherfucker, woof, motherfucker. And also, we're Frankie... That was Frankie's introduction to Snoop Dogg. Where Frankie grew up to it, that type of hip hop fit that area. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's. Say no more. Yeah. Say la vie. It's. Like, when I think back of all the hip hop I listened to, like through high school and through till now. Dude, Outkast, Tribe Called Quest, Biggie, Pac, Wu Tang, Nas. God, just. I could go on for fucking 20 minutes naming the groups I listen to. You know, the Dog Pound. Outkast for me was. I loved Outkast. Just their style, their. That your, southern style, and then with Andre and fucking oh man. What's your favorite Outkast album? <sighs> I I know mine. I well I I will my f- I'm not gonna lie. My first I was kind of late to the Outkast. My first Stankonia introduction was Aquemini. Aquemini Aquemini was a great album. Rosa Parks, like like we talked about earlier, Rosa Parks was like one of the first songs I recorded on a tape. Yeah, with the boombox, Rosa Parks. <clears throat> Rosa Parks is a phenomenal song. Phen- I, I mean, I, that's when I fell in love. So that's when I discovered their other shit, the Atlians, uh, Southern, Southern uh, playlist. Catalytic- yeah, Southern Playalistic, Catalytic. Southern, Southern Playalistic, Catalytic, Catalytic music. Catalytic music. <laughs> yes. So Eight. that was like the gateway. Sometimes it takes. Sometimes it takes that mainstream. ATL. You know what I'm saying? One Eight. of my favorite bands of all time is Incubus. And you know they're like, oh, the drive. You know, off of uh, Make Yourself. Yeah. That was like their big breakout hit. That wasn't their first album. No. They made albums before that, which were good too. Which So when I discovered them, I went back and listened to their other shit. Fuck, this band's good as shit. Well, that's it's like, kind of the same thing. I discovered Outkast when Rosa Parks came out and pff, fell in fucking love. That If you haven't listened to that whole album all the way through, Equimini is fucking... Outcast. That bef- might be one of my favorites. Before albums. before the Outcast double nice. before the double album. Everything before the double album. Listen to it. Obviously, you've had like groups like Wu Tang Clan had. They were all different, but to have a group where it's just like two guys. And their flows and styles are just everything m- so different. Uh, their styles so meshed, awesome. meshed so beautifully. It, uh, <laughs> there's nothing else to even say about like old school outcasts. I'll maybe dead honest with you. When I listen to God, a, I feel old. We're just talking about nostalgia. When I listen to a group, so when I listen to a group like the uh, the Clips. Great album. That first album's a great album, 
but I cannot tell the difference between Pusher T and Malice. I cannot tell a fucking difference. They they sound exactly the same to me. And they each shine differently. Like you listen yeah. to one saying song, Big Boy killed it. Yeah. Listen to the next song, Andre killed it. And that just went. Oh man, I get. I, I'm, you're taking me back, bro. It's like you know, at work now. It's I listen to. It's either podcasts or it's instantly. Like my, I can tell you what I listen to at work. Get to work at four a.m. It's usually Monday. It's our podcast. Then whatever podcast I missed on Friday, usually the pod. And then uh, at McAfee. Yep. And then at 7 o'clock, it goes to, or 8 o'clock, it goes, I turn on the Sirius radio and listen to Busted Open Radio, followed by the Pat McAfee show at 11 o'clock. And then after that, it's music the rest of my day. So I've found some bands that I like, I want to listen to their album, so I'll download it. But most of the time, it's like, I'm going to listen to the essentials of this band, like, when Eddie Van Halen died, I listened to the essentials of Eddie of Van Halen and re, just remembering songs that I haven't heard in fucking forever. Just like it I said, it takes you back. It's so good. Just like I said, I, I listen, love it. I listened to Limp Biscuit this week. And you listen and to people the, shit on Limp Biscuit hard now. Hard. But, but you all, know what? Put, go in. If you have iTunes, go and put the essential Limp Biscuit album on. The Essentials, it says. And it's just basically a, a greatest hits album. And, yeah, when you get to, you know, when you get to hot dog flavored water, you're going to get all, you know. How dare you. You're going to get to rolling. You're going to get to, you know, you know what I mean? You're going to get. <laughs> Is it the original rolling or the one with DMX? And oh, it's the original. Method it's the original rolling. But. I like the version with all of them. But, you know, when you listen to Counterfeit off of $3 Bills, fucking good song. Such a good song. Fred, they had some bangers, man. Fred Durst is, actually wrote quality music. And it's just, I don't feel the same way anymore. And it's because I'm fucking old. <laughs> it's 100% what the problem is. It's because I, I I don't want to admit it, but I listen to this shit now, and I'm just like, I don't get it. Especially hip hop. Especially hip hop. Hip hop's the worst. I can't. Do not it's get me wrong. Though. Do not it's get different. me wrong. There is some hip hop, maybe that comes There's, out, but like like Kendrick Lamar. Love Kendrick Lamar. I I fucking Lupe Fiasco put out some fucking phenomenal albums. But when you get into like the little pump, yeah. This, he's just saying Gucci Gang. This Xanax no. rap is no. Dude, I'm out. No, I'm out. Out. When you're just Gucci re- Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. And out. in all honesty, what really lost me, what really lost me, is when Little Uzi was on one of the morning radio shows, and he said, Ooh, "Pocket knife," and he said. Yeah, pocket knife. And he said, if you're going to play one of those old beats, I'm not going to rap over it. Yeah. Know your fucking history. Period. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you do not respect the past, you're not worth me putting any of your shit on. Because that is the most disrespectful thing you could say to somebody. Especially guys. You have to. You have to respect the past to make the future better. Well, that's like saying, fuck Run DMC. I'm not rapping to a Run DMC beat. It's like, what? Well, yeah. These dudes paved the fucking way. Yeah, if it wasn't for Run DMC and Grandmaster Flash and, you know, Grandmaster Cass and all, you know. Ha, no, you're fucking LL Cool J. Know your fucking history. Ice T. Ice Cube. Well, that's the problem. All these dudes have grown up with Ice T on fucking CSI. 
Still, still one <laughs> of my, SVU. still one of my favorite jokes. Ice tea then. I'm a cop killer. I'm a ice tea now. Yeah, I'm ice tea. I'm, I'm here. I'm here to be the cop. I'm here to audition to be the cop. <laughs> All right, oh, man, we're, we're, we're over our hour point, so. We are. We hope we penetrated your ear pussies and dug deep inside them. And we, I, I came. I don't know about you, Sean. Twice. I, <laughs> I, I hope we have sparked. Never forget where you came from. I hope we sparked some conversations that you can have with people. Just bring it up at work. Be like, hey, listen to these two fucking idiots talk about 90s hip-hop or rock music. What do you, how do you think rock music is doing? When's the last time you heard a fucking good rock song? Like, Because I, I can't remember. I'm not going to lie to you. I just downloaded a punk album by a band called... Uh, God, now I got to look it up. It's... Uh, a, well, dude, it's... Easy, mama. Almost one o'clock. They're called Tired Radio. And it's actually they're from New York, and it's a uh, tired podcast for sure. But it reminds me of that all the music that Kayla and her friends listen to, the used, the seen shit, the yeah. used, taking back Sunday, all that. Stuff. It it has an a bit of that in it, and that's why I like it because I love that shit. I don't know why for some reason. Like all that ultra it makes de- me happy. Ultra that ultra depressing murder music, <laughs> kill myself suicide but music. But it's like upbeat. Makes me happy. Yeah, it's most of the shit. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I my Chemical Romance has some dark shit, but they're like upbeat shit. Well, there's there's bands like fuck that I listen seven to days like, a week. I'll j- I'll jam out to my Chemical Romance. Like uh, off of Victory Records in Chicago when Victory Records was huge, like. Bayside and Silverstein and all those bands like that that were in, in uh, uh, Hawthorne Heights and all those bands that it was like sli- slice your, yeah slice your wrist music basically is what I like to call it but <laughs> but but it's the 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 writing is just so good like the way they capture they can, the emotion. They can, Make a depressing song, and it would be like ba 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 ba, and you'd be like happy about it, like yeah. you'd be smiling as you're, yeah, hanging yourself. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Yeah, it was depressing as shit. It was dark shit. Everyone had eyeliner on and wearing nothing but black <laughs> and out. saying "fuck my dad." Did you post that picture yet of you with the fucking gloves on? Yeah, I put it on our last did YouTube you, video. Did you? Okay, I good. Dare you? Good. Feast your eyes. Uh, yeah, you had your Avenge Sevenfold run. Yeah, so I'm saying some of the songs were depressing, some of them were beautiful. Gunslinger is actually one of my favorite songs from Avenge Sevenfold. But you could take a song. I, there's a great. We were talking about Outcast earlier, and this podcast is running way too long. Yeah, but there is a. This is the last point. Acoustic version of the Hey Ya, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Outcast. It is, it is a depressing song. It's talking about relationships and breaking up and all this shit and then putting a smile on your face. It's, it's, yeah. So when you break down the lyrics, it's depressing as fuck, but it's so upbeat and that's how music fucking tricks you. So there's an acoustic version where it actually captures the essence of the song. It's a real somber, it's acoustic, it's uncut. Yeah. That's how the song should have been made. But it's crazy. All these girls like, oh my God, this is my song. They're all dancing in the club and it's about this fucking relationship that's absolutely falling apart. Yeah. Well, there's... <laughs> it's just so weird that shit happens like that. Like, you can alter it where as a dark... Betray You, whatever yeah. band you just mentioned before. Yeah. Dark band, somber meaning, but it affects you differently. You might think of it positively. Dude, There's it, a lot of those songs it, where I'm like, fuck yeah, you hear the drums and the guitar and you're like, those, those I'm are, having a great time, but then you listen to the lyrics and you're like, 
No, you're not. But what, but, but what that's doing, though, too, is it's also bringing all that shit that you feel out. When that music's hitting, you're just pushing all that energy out of you. Like when you go to yes. the concerts, especially, you're pushing all that negative out of you. And that's the, that's the power of a, sh- of a sad song. Like, I, uh, I posted on Facebook, but the song Whiskey and You by Chris Stapleton is one of the deepest songs. Like, if you actually just sit down and listen to the lyrics, the one lyric is, I drink because I'm lonesome, and I'm lonesome because I drink. He's talking about yeah. losing his wife because he's a fucking alcoholic. Well, the other song, too, you mentioned tonight was... Uh... Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah, and the, that cover. Yeah, what was the fucking band? The Serb. Yeah, the Serb cover. Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. That song is depressing as it fucking gets. Dark, but dark. no one, no one gets depressed listening to it. It's a great fucking song. Exactly, and that's the power of music, and that's where we're gonna cut it off tonight. Power of music. The power of music. It's just great that where we should end it is to think of the perspective and the mind that you're in. Think positively, even if it's a depressing song. If you're enjoying it and having a good time, I mean, this life, this life beats us down. It kicks our fucking ass, especially for regular old fucks like us. Yes. That's why we all get so mad about the stock market and all this shit. And they're like, oh, we're shutting it down. It's like, because the little guy's getting ahead. It's, you know what? Take a shitty song and turn it into a positive. Have fun. Throw up the fucking rock star. Bob your head. Do a mosh pit. Let the music. And have a fucking good time. Yeah, let, let the music uh, be your guide, if you will. And with that yeah, being said. Yeah, I mean, said, Shaka Khan had it right. Let the music play. <laughs> with that being said. You can't said, get away. With, with that being said, <laughs> for Jeff and ah. myself and for Frankie. Tease and peace, Francis. Tease and peace, Francis. Thank you all for listening. Come back again next week. We'll try to keep it under an uh, hour and a half next week. Uh, thanks again yeah, for bye. listening. Uh, and if you would like. If you're still with us by this time. Yeah. Hit the, hit the like and you. subscribe. Leave us a review. So you, sir, ma'am. And also, you know, get the word out Thanks. of a, you know, pass the word on to your friends. If they need something to listen to, come listen to two idiots from Wisconsin talk shit. Well, three idiots, but it's only been two for the last few weeks. We're done an idiot. We're done. We're, we're <laughs> the, the tripod is missing a leg. It's falling over. So, yeah. Uh, and if you want to support us even more, go to shop.spreadshirt.com backslash the hyphen gentleman's hyphen den. For all your Gentleman's Den merch needs, buy yourself a t-shirt, a hat, a koozie. A... We got travel mugs on there, man. Everybody drinks coffee Fucking now. Fanny packs. Fanny packs. All that shit. Coming back. Go out there, pick up some merch for us. It really doesn't help us out because we don't have it set up where we're going to make any money off this shit. <laughs> so, so, yeah, go check it out. Shop.spreadshirt.com backslash the hyphen Gentleman's hyphen den. We're going to put some new stuff up there, and actually we're going to have a uh, teeter-totter cocker shirt up there. If you don't know what that is, go to our YouTube channel, The Gentleman's Den on YouTube. And, you know, fuck it, follow, us on, Inst- follow us on Instagram and fucking Twitter at TGD Podcast one and The Gentleman's Den Podcast on Facebook. Once again, for Jeff, I am Sean. Thanks for listening. We'll see you around the road. And remember... Dick's out for Rambe, and Epstein didn't kill himself. Never. <laughs> Cheers to next week. Peace.